hey guys how are you so in this video friends i am going to talk to you regarding the land use in india the types of land use in india okay how much amount of land is under what occupation and uh, what is the basis of the classification of land in India? So this is the topic of my video, friends. So first of all, starting this, I will tell you that the total geographical land mass of India is around 328.73 million hectares. Coming to the second point, the reported area which can be used for actual land utilization comes out to be 308 million hectares. So out of this 328.73 million hectares, friends, which is the total land mass of India, the amount of reported area which can be used for actual land utilization, it is only 308 million hectares. That is around 20 million hectares cannot be utilized for land utilization. Then comes the net sore area. What is net zone area? That I am going to tell you in, uh, subsequently. Net zone area is basically 142 million hectares. It is 142.82 something, which is around 46% of 308 million hectare. What was this 308 million hectare? This 308 million hectare was the reported area which was available for actual land utilization. Okay, friends. So this is net zone area. Now, what is net zone area, friends? Net zone area is that amount of area, friends, which is on which actual, you know, uh, cropping is done, actual agriculture is done. That is, for example, out of this 308 million hectare, on around 142 million hectare, actual agricultural process is going on. That is, wheat is being grown, pulses is being grown, edible oils is being grown, rice is being grown, pulse, any other crop, me, sorghum, wheat, varsley, um, uh, jowar, any crop is being grown so this is that amount of area on which actual agricultural processes are taking place so this is net zone area okay friends and there is one more concept which is related to net zone area it is the gross cropped area what is gross cropped area friends okay this gross cropped area is always more than the net zone area this is basically for example that it is like this that friends when we are calculating net zone area okay now it is not like that on a particular piece of land in a year only one crop is gone it happens many a places in india <clears throat> that on a particular piece of land more than one crops are gone in a particular year because you know that there are three agricultural cycles in india okay friends kharif rabi and zayed so obviously on a particular piece of land more than one crops may also be grown so def so in actual usage, only 142 million hectares of the land is being utilized in a year. But those lands on which more than one crop are grown in a particular year, then they will be counted more than once because they are being used to grow crop more than once in a year. So obviously, the amount of land which is producing more than one crop in a particular year, that will be added extra to it and it will come out to be a gross cropped area. So in India, you can see, See at the 8th point, the gross zone cropped area is around 189 million hectare. And what was the net zone area? See at point 3, it is 142 million hectare. So if you are going to subtract 142 from 189, it will come out around as 47 million hectares. So around 47 million hectares is that particular area in this 142 million hectares of net zone area on which more than one crop is grown in a particular year. So obviously, this gross cropped area is more than net zone area. It doesn't mean that there is extra amount of land the land is only 142 million hectares on which agriculture is taking place but there is around 47 million hectares of land on which more than one crop is grown in a particular year therefore gross cropped area is coming more than the net zone area basically this can also be related to the cropping intensity this you know, uh, the gross cropped area is very high than the net zone area in countries like China, where cropping intensity is very, very high, friends. So I hope you understood this concept of net zone area and gross cropped area, friends. Net zone area is that amount of land, geographical land on which agriculture is really taking place. And out of that net zone area, that amount of land on which more than one crop is grown in a particular year, that gets added again to this net zone area. And we get the commensurate figure of gross cropped area. So this is the difference between net zone area and gross cropped area. I hope this was clear to you, friends. Net zone area, this is a, the statistics of 2000, which will give you an idea. Okay, friends. So, net zone area at present is 142 million hectares and gross cropped area is around 189 million hectares. Then comes the area occupied by forest. The area occupied by forest is 68.75 million hectares in India. 
Okay. Now we are going to talk about the breakup of that area which is not presently under cultivation. Okay. So this can be further break up into two heads. You can see in this point 5. So in this point 5 break up of area which is not under cultivation. The first thing which comes under this category is area under non-agricultural uses. So this area under non-agricultural uses is 22.45 million hectares. And the second category comes as barren and unculturable land. This barren and unculturable land is around 19.09 million hectares. What comes under this area under non-agricultural uses and barren and unculturable land? This we are going to talk subsequently in this video only. Right now I am telling you the amount of area which is coming under these heads. Then comes the sixth category which is the fallow land. The fallow land is also of two types friend. One is current fallow which is around 13.33 million hectares and the second is fallow land other than the current fallow which is around 9.89 million hectares. So totally it comes out as around 23 point something million hectares. Then comes the seventh category which is other uncultivated land excluding fallow land. You know that uncultivated land which is not under fallow land. This is the first type is permanent pasture and other grazing land. As the name suggests, I will also tell you what exactly comes this. This is 11.04 million hectare. Then comes land under miscellaneous tree crops and groups not included in net area zone. It is 3.57 million hectares. Then comes culturable wasteland. It is comprising of 13.94 million hectares. So. This is the amount of land which is coming under different head friends. In India, the net irrigated area out of 142 million hectares is around 55 million hectares. So see the gravity of the condition friends. 142 million hectares is the net zone area and out of that only 55 million hectares has net irrigated. That means the remaining is dependent on monsoon on rainfall. So you can understand how grave the situation is and obviously the gross irrigated area is 73 million hectares. This means that out of this 55 million hectares, some amount of irrigation is done on the same land for the second crop. So it comes out as 73 million hectares, the gross irrigated area. So this was basically the amount of land which is coming under different heads friends. Now we are going to understand that what is the meaning of these different heads. First is land put to non-agricultural use. Okay. Now what comes in this land which is put to non-agricultural use, these are the lands which is occupied by buildings, roads and railways or basically the land which is under water okay, or other lands which are put to uses okay, which are not agricultural use. So this comes under the land put to non-agricultural use friends. Then comes the barren and unculturable lands. Barren land is lands in the desert where no agriculture can happen. In mountains obviously in very steep mountains agriculture is not possible so that comes in the barren land. Unculturable land obviously that land which cannot be bought under cultivation. However it may be bought but a lot, a lot of amount of you know exorbitant crop exorbitant cost may be required to bring to make it into culturable from unculturable. So basically barren and unculturable land is that land on which agriculture cannot take place take it for the time being. Coming forward comes the permanent pastures and other grazing lands. So obviously all those grazing lands whether they are permanent pastures and meadows or whether they are temporary pastures or meadows they come under this head okay village common grazing land is included in this head because in the villages when there is no forest when there is no agriculture taking place that amount of land which is used for the grazing of the cattle in the villages that is included under this head of permanent pastures and other grazing lands okay friends then comes the land under miscellaneous tree crops and other groups not included in net zone area Okay friends, so basically uh, see the definition, see the heading, land under miscellaneous tree crops and other groups not included in net area zone. Obviously this is not included in net area zone. This includes all those cultivable land which is not included in that 142 million hectares which I told you as a net zone area. But it is put to some agricultural uses. However, it is not covered in that 142 million hectares. So that is the land under miscellaneous tree crops and other groups. Then comes the culturable wasteland. Okay friends, now wasteland is being divided into two parts. One is the culturable wasteland, second is the unculturable wasteland. Unculturable wasteland I have discussed with you first of all. I will tell you what is culturable wasteland. Basically this is a land which is available for cultivation but it has not been in cultivation for more than 
past five years. That is, it has been without any use for more than the past five years. For one reason or the other. There can be any reason. But from the last five years, for more than five years, this land has not been put to use. So this is basically culturable wasteland. Why culturable? Because some amount of amendments can make this land potentially useful for agriculture. That is, this land has potential for the development of vegetative cover. But it is not being used currently due to different constraints like erosion of water, wind or salinity or anything like that. But it is culturable. It is not being used in the past for more than the past five years. But it can be converted into agricultural useful land. But currently it is wasteland. So this is culturable wasteland. Second comes the unculturable wasteland. This is basically that land which cannot be developed for vegetative covers for example the glacier areas the barren rocky areas i have already told you in the unculturable that is in order to convert this unculturable land into culturable a lot of investment is required which is non you know which is non sustainable so basically places like barren rocky areas and the places which are glacier covered snow covered obviously agriculture is very much difficult at that places and if we are going to try to bring agriculture in those places a lot of investment huge investment will be required which is will not be sustainable in the long run then comes the category of fallow lands other than the current fallow for that we first need to understand what is current fallows current fallow is basically that uh, land friends which is cropped but for the current year, for the time being in this year, it is not cropped. It is not cropped in this year because again its fertility. It has been left fallow this year to regain its fertility. So this is current fallow this year. Okay, friends. And what is fallow lands other than current fallow? This include all those lands which were taken up for cultivation but are temporarily out of cultivation for a period of not less than one year and not more than five years. Understood, friends? Two types of fallow lands are there. One is current fallow, other is fallow lands other than current fallow. What is current fallow? Current fallow is that that amount of land which for the time being in this year is not under cultivation. It can be cultivated, but this year it is not under cultivation because it has been left fallow to regain fertility. But that land, that fallow lands other than current fallow, this include those lands which are out of cultivation for a period of more than one year but less than five years. So one to five years land which is left fallow, it is fallow land other than current fallow to regain fertility and current fallow is that land, that amount of land which is, you know, not under cultivation for this particular year in order to gain its fertility back. So this is basically current fellow and second class is fellow lands other than current fellow, current fellow gaining fertility and not cultivating anything on the land for one year and for more than a year and less than five years comes under the category of fellow land other than current fellow and if it is going to cross more than five years then obviously it will become culturable wasteland that I've already told you. So friends I hope this video was very much helpful for you. If this video is helpful for you please like this video and subscribe to my channel and tell me that how you like this video and any more topics that you want me to teach to you. So thank you for watching my video friends and thank you for being patient. Have a very very nice day.